Francis Quinn. Yep. I'm Erin. I'm a registered respiratory therapist. And I'm Jerry, and I'm also a registered respiratory therapist, and I've been in the profession for 35 years. I got into respiratory therapy because my husband actually has cystic fibrosis. And I basically got into the <coughs> respiratory care profession because uh, when I was living in uh, Valentine, Nebraska, my son developed croup, which is a respiratory illness that uh, a lot of small children have. And, uh, Got to meet the respiratory therapist there, and um, he took care of my son, and I uh, got really interested in it, and something that uh, I felt that I would enjoy doing. Respiratory therapy with especially like cystic fibrosis, asthma, COPD, there's hundreds of different respiratory diseases out there. Pulmonary fibrosis alone takes up hundreds of different types of diseases, and one of the things we can do in an outpatient setting um, is we can do pulmonary function tests, which is actually this setup we have behind us. And here at our hospital, we do a full array of pulmonary function testing. We do um, simple spirometries, which would show obstructive or restrictive disorders, which can really help doctors differentiate the types of things that are going on in your lungs. We do methacholine challenges, which are specific tests for asthma. We test diffusion, how well is gas crossing in your lungs, which is important. You obviously want your body to get oxygen, and that's the best way and the only way it's going to happen. And then um, we test for lung volumes as well, which can definitely change with different respiratory diseases. And as, as Aaron mentioned, I think pulmonary function tests a lot of times are overlooked by physicians. And uh, so many times when we see patients... Uh, they're elderly patients that have been smoking 30, 40 years, and by the time we see them, a lot of times, uh, their disease process has progressed to the point where um, it's irreversible. I guess the thing that we as respiratory therapists would like to see is patients coming in at a younger age, especially those that have uh, been smoking for 15, 20 years, probably in their 40s, and uh, that way we can do the education and uh, show the patient that they probably already have some significant lung damage and at that point uh, we can encourage them to stop smoking or get out of the environment that they're in that probably is causing their, their lung problems. Like Jerry said, you know, with smoking and those types of things, it's another type of outpatient, inpatient service that we provide is smoking cessation. You know, a respiratory therapist is holds a wide array of knowledge that can really be beneficial for patients who are looking for different options for smoking cessation and different help. We can definitely be there for people and we provide that service when we do do pulmonary function tests and we provide that service when patients are in the hospital and they're known to be smokers. Um, we're also here for the patients who have those rare respiratory illnesses where they or born with it. Um, genetic disorders, there's lots of them out there that can cause the same type of damage that smoking does to the lungs and there's asthma which is can be huge for kids and adults. Adults develop it late in age as well and we need to be here to help them understand and have the education for those things. And one of the other things uh, that we're looking at and a lot of hospitals have already started this is pulmonary rehab. So we'll, we'll take patients that, that have been diagnosed with emphysema or some chronic respiratory problem and um, we can educate them on how to live with their disease, how to do proper breathing exercises and, and basically how to keep their lungs uh, functioning at, a, at a, a high level even though they have a, a respiratory uh, uh, problem we can teach them how to basically max maximize the, uh, the lung capacity that they have. So this is something that we're going to be starting uh, very shortly and already a lot of hospitals have already developed uh, pulmonary rehab programs. The other thing we're looking into is advancing the PFT setting, the pulmonary function testing that we do have by adding what's called an auto box for improved accuracy in our lung volumes and really to help maximize patient comfort. Um, lung volume tests can be very um, time consuming and you know if you've got to hold your mouth closed over something for a long period of time it starts to get a little uncomfortable and a lot of the bigger hospitals have switched to this auto box so we're definitely trying to bring one here and bring one to our community.
Um, in the inpatient setting, we're there for emergencies. Um, we're definitely the breathers around here. We make sure that the airway is managed, and that's our big job. And if that includes ventilator management, we're there for patients who are ventilated. We are there for patients who need to be intubated and transported. So we're also part of that critical care group here as well. What advice have you got for parents? To what should they look for if they think that there's something with their children that uh, would indicate a pulmonary disorder of some kind? You want to address that, Erin? Um, wheezing is a big one. If you hear your child whistling at all when they're breathing, that whistling noise, um, coughing at night is huge. If they're having trouble participating in sports and things like that, they just feel like they can't catch their breath, that's definitely another big one that you want to keep in mind. So what would the parent do if they noticed that? Talk to your physician, talk to, you know, go bring them into the clinic and normally when they're brought into the clinic with those types of things, we're seeing a lot of um, pulmonary function tests ordered for asthma, testing them for asthma right away, especially at a young age. And I think uh, parents especially should be aware of the fact that if parents or siblings have asthma or asthma-like symptoms, uh, more than likely their, their children will also have, have asthma, so that's the, the key thing because uh, asthma especially uh, is hereditary. And uh, so if a parent has asthma, they definitely, and if they have a child, as Aaron mentioned, that has some respiratory problems, that should be a, a clue for them to uh, have the child seen by a physician as soon as possible because the earlier that we can uh, diagnose asthma, uh, we can get the child on proper medications and, again, education as to how to live with their, with their disease. Is there anything else you'd like to uh, tell the people who are going to see this video? Uh, I guess I'd like to tell them that uh, the big thing, I guess, that I was always taught when I went to respiratory therapy school is, is smoking, and I think that's the, the big key, and I know in the last few years a lot has been done as far as promoting uh, uh, things to stop smoking, and especially in, in our community here, I would say the largest problem that we have uh, with patients that we see is a long history of smoking. So I guess uh, as respiratory therapists, we, we need to get the word out and continue to uh, tell people that secondhand smoke along with people that smoke is a, a, a real issue. Aaron, what about you and your, your husband with cystic fibrosis? Do you have any advice for? Uh... Um, I think that you just shouldn't let any respiratory disorder keep you from doing the things that you love to do. And I know that he especially would be the first person to tell anybody that he's never let having cystic fibrosis keep him from doing the things he loves and he takes care of himself for that reason. And so if you ever feel like you just can't do something because you have a respiratory disorder, please, you know, we are here to help you and that's what we're here for. Thank you.